Yeah. I just got here and um, took a few minutes to really look at uh, some of these realities of what I'm having to work with. Yeah. Now, uh, I was just reading back, uh, well, to the 1807s when the Whig government wanted to change the structure of the Scottish legal system. Yeah. To make it more like the English system. Mm -hmm. See, in the United States, much of the laws is based upon uh, what was happening in England before 1776. Yes. And then uh, just looking at this, um, the, the course remains that in the United States Constitution, but it was felt very strongly in this country in the late 18th century and beginning in the 19th century, this evidence, proof, fact-finding, and the expert witness. Yeah. Uh, was one of the reasons why the Whig government was trying to introduce the reforms of the court of session, which uh, Walter Scott objected. Yeah. Now, I want to draw your attention to the fact uh, that several of the words used in that brief description, known as the trial, yes, the evidence, the witness, the examination, cross-examination, and proof. <laughs> there is no precise parallel in the French language, or indeed in most of the other languages of the world. <laughs> Now, you know how the French are always concerned about doing everything right and how the English were doing it right. Yeah. But it looks like in the United States of America, mm -hmm. you can say that somebody was in a city that they weren't in. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then all you have to do is you just have to put this. Um, no contact until there's a mental health evaluation of respondent and treatment if recommended. Yes. Now, there's a big problem with this because that was on uh, pretty much all the protection orders. Yes. See, when um, law enforcement didn't arrest me in 2011, it was the um, Gomanian government that did. Yes. Heidi had called the police on July 2nd of 2011, alleging domestic violence and child abuse. And... Um, when she got here, Clallam County had issued a protection order, yes, without an arrest and without any credible threat to herself or my sons. Now, this idea that you can put this on a protection order, yes, without any jurisdictional law, mm -hmm. without uh, the respondent being a resident of the state of Washington, yes, without the petitioner being a resident of the state of Washington, yeah. Now, you can make a confidential report in a sealed envelope that I was arrested on Guam, but the actual jurisdiction for the requirement of a mental health evaluation was um, the obligation of the United States Territory of Guam. Yes. And I had a mental health evaluation. In fact, Wayne had said, well, really, he didn't commit any crime, but we're going to have you do seven hours of parenting classes so as to be sure that when you're raising your children, yes, you do understand uh, what you can and can't do as a parent. Poop. Now, this reissuance of the temporary protection order where I did not get any notice of the court hearing. Yeah, you actually didn't have jurisdiction of law to do that. <laughs> and as much as you dislike me telling you this, yes, mm -hmm. you did not have jurisdiction of law to issue a protection order for one year. Oh, oh, oh. Now, let's say that you wanted me to do a mental health evaluation mm -hmm. without uh, any actual jurisdiction of the law. Yes. Then my, my wife alleges that I violated the protection order after having petitioned for dissolution of marriage. Yes. Well, I was arrested um, on approximately May 28th of 2012. In fact, I think that's the actual date. <laughs> Arraigned on the 29th, or it could have been the 27th. I can look at the dates. Yes. And she filled out all this information, and then she says, well, I'm not going to pay to serve him because I'm a victim of domestic violence, and the domestic violence didn't happen in the state of Washington. Now, exactly why would a court be able to issue any protection orders for a mental health evaluation uh -huh, when um, there was no actual domestic violence or child abuse in the state of Washington? Mm -hmm. Now, um, after you arrested me, yes, mm -hmm. you reissued the protection order. 
and you put the same thing on this protection order while I was on trial for violating the other protection order. Now, you would need to have some sort of credible threat or and that's a reported to police department credible threat, not just a woman running in there saying my husband's crazy. Yes. To be able to obligate a mental health evaluation. Now, uh, you reissue this by minute order, and I explained to you about the laws of the United States of America. There is no minute order reissuing of a protection order. <laughs> the original protection order that was illegal to issue because nothing happened in the state of Washington. Yes. Yeah. Um, well, this is how this works. <coughs> yes, it does. Mm -hmm. You, as a court, never had jurisdiction or authority of law mm -hmm, to obligate me to have to have a mental health evaluation. Poop. See, my record was expunged on July 24th of 2012. Yes. Uh, there was no arrest record. Yes. There was no actual record of the court hearings. Right. The whole thing was sealed. Yes. Now, every time you reissued a protection order, you had one of these. Mental health evaluation of respondent. Oh. And treatment if recommended. <laughs> Without taking into consideration, yes, that you never had jurisdiction to obligate me to have a mental health evaluation. Do you not understand that when I was not arrested in the state of Washington, mm -hmm, and I was not a threat to my wife or kids at any time during 10 years of marriage, yes, that her making a declaration of the arrest on Guam did not give you jurisdiction to issue the protection order. You only have jurisdiction to issue the protection order if there's a credible threat to herself or my sons. Yes. Or, uh huh, an arrest. Oh. And since I can't be a credible threat, yes, when I'm 13,000 miles away, this condition of me being allowed visitation, uh huh. Uh, until there's a mental health evaluation? Yes. You never had jurisdiction for a mental health evaluation. You never did. Not on any of these temporary or uh, permanent protection. You, you never had any jurisdiction of law. Now, uh, number nine. Yes. A uh, court will review upon motion of respondent. Yes. Petitioners granted temporary care, custody, and control of the minors. Yes. Yeah. The respondent will be allowed visitation, no contact, until there's a mental health evaluation. <laughs> now, it looks to me like this county and this state, and quite possibly the United States, have been using these mental health evaluations, yes, without any jurisdiction of law. <clears throat> now, let's say I went through every one of these, Brent, <clears throat> and I decided to sue you right now for never having any jurisdiction to obligate me to have to have a mental health evaluation. Well, I'm going to want you to remove this today. I don't care if it's Saturday. Yes, it violates the laws of the United States. You could not issue this one-year protection order when I was no credit. 